Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Nancy, as Spencer very kindly introduced me as. Uh, I hope I'm not pretentious. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about Let's Encrypt. And so uh, first things first, a very quick bio is uh, I'm from Atlanta. I live in Atlanta for the, I've lived there for about seven years now. Um, I have two dogs, Karma and Kazi. Uh, they're cute and adorable, and they know how to use their faces really well to get what they want. Um, I, I do a little bit of filmmaking on the side, um, and uh, I really like traveling. And I work for Automatic. I'm a happiness engineer at Automatic. I work with Jetpack and other .org premium services, so uh, Akismet, Ball Press, um, things like that. Uh, I'm also going to be at the Jetpack sponsor table, so if you do ever have any questions and you don't want to ask in a big room, um, feel free to find me over there. I'll be there for basically the rest of the day. Um, so yeah, all right. So. Uh, we are here to talk about, uh, or listen to me talk about, uh, HTTPS and SSL certificates. Um, but the first thing to, to go over is what the heck is HTTPS, HTTPS in the first place. Um, so HTTPS is, uh, oh, one second, I'm sorry, I was having a, a computer issue, sorry. Uh, HTTPS is uh, actually hypertext, it's HTTP plus a layer of security. So uh, it keeps your passwords, your communication, your credit card information, all these sorts of uh, personal information uh, private and secure when it's in transit from your computer to wherever you're sending it. Um, it's, it's still speaking in HTTP, but everything's encrypted. So the idea of HTTPS, like how does it actually work? Um, it's not terribly complicated, um, but it does use a lot of technical jargon. So that slide is more for um, just to read it and know all of the words. But um, to explain it a bit, a bit better, a bit more succinctly, is to say that, um, say you're, use, you're on your computer and you're wanting to buy the, the latest Twilight DVD because you're totally into Twilight. Um, and you say, all right, so I need to give you my credit card information. Um, so basically you say, hey, I'm, I wanna talk to you. Hi, server, uh, can, you make sh can you let me know and confirm for me that you are the server that I want to send my credit card information to? And you know, not, that some, not somebody that's gonna steal all of my money. Uh, the server says, hey, yeah, of course, let me know what you need to know, uh, and I will send all of that information to you. And so basically you talk, you decide how you're gonna encrypt the data to send to each other and confirm that you are who you say you are and they are who they say they are. Um, and then once that uh, encryption um, key is decided upon, then you're going to start sending the information back and forth. So what is the actual point of HTTPS? Um, HTTP, uh, it, it's what the internet is built on, but you, for things like private information, you do want to verify that you're talking to who you really actually want to be talking to. Um, and you wanna make sure that uh, things like man in the middle attacks, which are um, basically you think that you're talking to somebody, you're, you think you're talking to your bank, um, and you see the, the, the web page and it says Bank of America, and you see the, the little green padlock, and you're like, all right, great, Bank of America, padlock, I'm talking to Bank of America. But that's not necessarily, um, not necessarily necessarily the case, right? So you, you need to confirm that it is actually Bank of America that you're talking to. Um, so this is actually from a, a wiki article um, on the Diffie-Hellman key exchange, which is what uh, the SSL certificate and the encryption that an SSL certificate provides is based upon. Um, and that's about as simple as uh, an explanation, at least visually, that you can get. There's a lot of really great explanations of what Diffie-Hellman is, and it involves a lot of math. Um, if you're not actually into the math side of things, uh, I don't recommend looking at that. But this, this, this um, paint analogy actually explains it really well. So you have this common paint, right? Your common information that you wanna share. And each side has a secret secret color paint. Um, and you are going to combine your secret with the common information and create, so you combine yellow and orange, and you make, or yellow and red, you make orange. Um, and then you switch the information, right? So you send your information to the other server and the server, other server sends information to you. And using your secret uh, paint that you have, um, you can decrypt the information and so both sides have the information that they need. So um, one thing to keep in mind is that HTTPS, this SSL certificate, all of it is, um, the margin of, for error is quite slim and HTTPS is not unbreakable. Um, the SSL protocol is constantly evolving to, to keep up with hackers, to keep up with people that, are actually, that tend to have malicious intentions to break this security protocol. Um, so uh, even though it's, um, even though it is quite secure, it is, it is a great 
thing you should be doing for your site. It's not the only thing you should be doing. Um, just because you have HTTPS doesn't mean that you are now protected from all hacking of your site. Your site can still get hacked. Um, and Rob Heaton, uh, he's a, a British fellow that is quite entertaining. You should read his site if you are interested in learning more about security. Um, it, his quote, uh, you know, puts it most succinctly that even though you, you do have an, uh, an SSL certificate, that doesn't necessarily mean that you aren't going to still get hacked. You will, if you're not careful elsewhere, you have, there's lots of different avenues and holes that, that people can get into, into your site. So not to, not to scare anyone, but just don't think that this is the end all be all. Um, so the significance of SSL. Um, currently, the, uh, that the sites that you see that have uh, SSL certificates, um, it's not like everyone is using SSL certificates. So when you see a site that's using an SSL certificate, you see the little green padlock, you think, okay, all right, so this, this site is dealing with um, important information or private information, right? So that it's saying, it's, basic, it's, it's essentially signifying that this private information is quote, uh, quote unquote important. Um, because not everyone is using it. If everyone was using it, then it just becomes a common thing, right? So if somebody is using it, then you're signifying that, at least allegedly signifying that it's important. Um, this idea is, uh, is really important because um, you have things like political dissidents or you have um, governments that are watching your, um, watching your communication. If they see that you are, are communicating via an encrypted layer, then they may think that you are, well, guilty of doing something, right? It's the, the whole innocent until guilty argument. Um, so I, I am promoting SSL certificates as in everybody should do it. It's, uh, it's similar to the idea of, uh, of herd immunity. So you take a vaccine to be protected from diseases, right? You're going to say, all right, I am now hopefully not going to get polio, right? Um, and, but you're not necessarily just taking it for yourself. You're also taking it for those around you that can't take that vaccine. So if you say that, hey, I'm taking this vaccine, I don't want polio, you're also protecting babies and the elderly from because you're no longer going to be a host for polio either, right? Still with me? I see lots of blank faces, and so I want to make sure this is still entertaining. Yeah? Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, and so basically that the significance of SSL is that um, right now, because it's not nearly so commonly used, it signifies something more than... Um, than it really should, because just because you're using an SSL certificate does not in any way imply that you're doing something wrong by no stretch of the imagination, but it could be used to imply that. Um, which brings us to a fairly famous uh, SSL uh, issue. Um, Edward Snowden was using LavaBit um, to, to encrypt all of his information to send it back and forth. Um, and when the FBI wanted to decrypt uh, his information, they couldn't because it was all encrypted. Um, and so they requested that LavaBit um, release their private key to in decrypt all of this information. And LavaBit said, yeah, no thanks. Um, and a US judge said, well, actually, yeah, you kind of have to. And so LavaBit ended up having to give their, their uh, private key to the FBI so they could decrypt all of this, this information. And um, in doing so, they lost their, um, their, in, uh, their security status, right? Because now they're compromised. They've given out their private key to someone, even though technically it is the government and hopefully it's still secure and stuff. It's not actually. And that private key is no longer private. Um, so all of that to say, uh, there's these, there's these lists, um, SSL certificates, they're, they are given by uh, certificate authorities. And these certificate authorities are, are very highly ranked, like they are the, the end all be all who has that say that you are secure, right? And it's very hard to become one of these top level uh, certificate authorities. Um, but once you, once you lose that privacy, once you are, um, once you've you know become compromised in, in this way, you do lose that that right to say, hey, I'm an SSL certificate that you can trust. Um, and once that happens, you're going to be put onto a certificate revocation list, a CRL, and uh, browsers and operating systems, um, as long as they keep those lists updated, will know what certificates have been revoked. So whenever you get those those snazzy little warnings on, when you try to go to a site and it says, hey, red flag, don't go to the site, it may be insecure. It's not necessarily necessarily saying that yes, it's definitely 100% been hacked, but that you can't trust the, the SSL certificate that's being used. All of this, all of these, these, uh, these things, especially in terms of like Snowden and as um, encryption becomes a bigger and bigger uh, a topic of interest, um, 
brings up things like privacy as a right. Do you as a human being using the internet uh, have a right to privacy, to what you're doing, um, whatever you're communicating, um, things that you're sending, things you're looking at, do you have a right to that to privacy for looking at whatever you're looking at um, within the information you're consuming, within the information you're sending, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there was, uh, once things like this started becoming more and more popular, there was actually a, a plugin on Chrome, it was an extension, um, and it, it would insert words into your into what you were looking at. It would say things like, pressure cooker or bomb or bomb making or different like chemicals that are used for bombs to to basically add additional noise to what you are looking at to try and you know like so the NSA is actually taking in all of the information that you are that you are looking at right they are storing it in very very large data centers and to try and add additional noise to that particular um, collection of data it also brings up this idea of freedom of software, which WordPress as a community is quite quite fond of and is quite a, a proponent of freedom of software. But um, is, uh, is, free, is software free to be created and to be used as it's intended by the creator, right? Um, and finally, freedom of privacy. Um, are you actually free to be private? Is that like a fundamental right to be free, to, to, um, to be, to do whatever you want and make sure that it is private. Um, and so it brings us, all of this comes together to create this freedom to use private, or freedom to use software privately. Um, Lawrence Lessig uh, wrote an article that said that um, once something knows that it's being watched, it inherently changes the way you it behaves. So it's often used in media, for example, like in documentary filmmaking, it, it is nonfiction, but at the same time, you are putting a camera in someone's face or you know, watching someone recording something. Um, and so just the inherent um, introduction of a camera changes your behavior, even if you're told, hey, don't worry about it, just be natural, be candid. Same as like here, there's photographers everywhere um, and they really do like candid shots. I, as a photographer, love candid shots, but I, I try really hard not to make myself, uh, you know, noticeable, right? Even though I have a big camera and a big lens or whatever, I, I want people to not notice what I'm doing because then you, you automatically change. You stand up straighter, you fix your hair, you fix your clothes, whatever. You want to present the, the best version of yourself, right? Um, so uh, this idea of freedom, um, privacy and freedom basically says that if you know that your all of your communication is being tracked, do you change the way you interact with that, that information? Do you change the way you act on the internet? All of these sorts of things. So, uh, all of that to say. The, the next thing is, um, so I've often heard, especially in terms of like SSL certificates or things that are quote unquote more complicated, that, well, I just run a blog. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not anything, I'm just, I'm just, talking about my cats on the internet. That's, that's all I'm doing. Why do I need to do like more complicated things? Well, hopefully by the end of this talk, you won't think SSL certificates are terribly complicated. Um, and hopefully it's not so scary of a thing. But um, it's not just the fact that you run a, a, a blog about your cats. It's the fact that, um, you know, uh, do you guys, does anyone build sites? Anyone? No? Yeah? Okay, so most of the room just raised their hand. Um, so you, you're building sites for others, right? So hopefully you are actually, you're using, you know, um, for example, making sure that you're not reusing passwords anywhere, right? You're hopefully using best practices for security for your sites as well as your client sites. But you can't confirm, like you can't definitely know that your clients are following those same best practices, right? That they're not using the same passwords everywhere. You can't confirm that your users that are coming to your sites or to your client sites when they're submitting, you know, their username and password to log in or to pay for something, that they're not reusing their passwords elsewhere. So. You do, I mean, you have a, a responsibility as a professional, as a, as a site builder, as a site runner, as a site owner, that uh, to provide at least that, that level of security to your users, to the people that are coming to visit your site, that they do at least, um, I mean, deserve that level of, of security and respect. Essentially saying that, you know, SSL certificates have, um, haven't always been the easiest thing to implement. Um, before Let's Encrypt, it was a lot harder to, to set up SSL certificates personally for your site. Um, it, you might have like a hosting platform that would help you, but if you're just on your own, it, you might actually 
feel really overwhelmed by all of the steps you had to take. But now with things like SSL or with uh, with Let's Encrypt or things like you, a lot of hosting platforms will help you set up an SSL certificate. Um, I'm on WP Engine, for example, and literally there's a button. I click a button and I like validate that I own my domain and that's it. It takes like 15 minutes and I'm done. Uh, so there's there are lots of options. and. In this day and age, if you're not using Let's Encrypt or an SSL certificate, especially when there's um, there's uh, information being transmitted, that's not the greatest idea. <laughs> um, so, how does SSL work in the first place? I've talked about all of the theoretical things, and so um, the technical nitty gritty stuff. Um, so, the the SSL is based on a two key encryption system. So, you have a private key and a public key. Um, your private key stays private hopefully, and your public key, you're exchanging back and forth to encrypt and decrypt this information. Um, you're using a symmetric algorithm and you're using asymmetric encryption. Um, I'm trying not to get too technical and delve into too many details because I don't want to, like, it's not necessarily important exactly how to know exactly how it works. There's a lot of math that goes into it. And if you're interested, I highly recommend that you, you Google this stuff because it is really interesting. Um, but I also understand that I'm a geek and I don't want to, like, spread that. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so you use this, uh, this encryption key and um, what you do, you have a public key. You encrypt all of the data, but you can, um, you can only uh, decrypt using the private key, right? So if the idea was that, oh, well, I can just use this public key and I encrypt the stuff, woohoo, yay. I mean, SSL certificates wouldn't be worth much. But if you have, when, once you have that private key, the two sides, you and the server that you're communicating with, um, you have your private keys and you can decrypt the information. That's why it's so important to keep your private key private. Um, and uh, anyone can, so anyone can and can encrypt this information, but only the two sides can decrypt it. The opposite is true for uh, digital signatures. Uh, digital signatures are are given by the certificate authorities that say that hey, you are who you say you are. We've confirmed it, and so we are going to encrypt this key. And uh, anyone can decrypt it using the public key that they're provided on the SSL certificate, and then, um, but only the certificate authority can actually encrypt the key in the first place to decrypt. Let me know if you guys are still with me. Um, <laughs> and uh, finally, self-signing. So um, just keep in mind that, as I mentioned earlier, all certificate authorities, the main, the you know, the the top of the chain of security of uh, certificate authorities are all self-signed. So they are saying that they are who they say they are, which technically could be dangerous, but they're the head hoo-ha people, and so they're going. They're actually quite secure and quite um, careful of retaining their security. So things like LavaBit once. Lava bit use it, loses its SSL. GoDaddy said, "Hey, yeah, you're not cool enough anymore. Sorry, we're eh, good luck," um, and revoked all of its its private security um, clearance, basically. So I've said certificate authority, I think, like 50 times so far. Um, and so, what exactly is a security or a certificate authority? Um, it's essentially so browsers when you're visiting when you're visiting a site, it'll when you're visiting a site with SSL certificate, um, there's two ways that you would uh, you would trust a site. You'd either implicitly trust it because you have either you or a browser has said, "Hey, I trust the site," um, and you the site is clear. It's free and clear, and browsers and operating systems and everyone has said that you're that you are good to go. Um, or you can say that uh, it's so. For example, you could. If SSL certificates were super simple to, to verify, you could just say, hey, I'm Microsoft, um, and you should like give me all of your information, because obviously I'm Microsoft, because I said so. Um, and it doesn't really work that way. Um, if it was actually that simple, um, everyone would just be saying, yeah, I'm Google, and Microsoft, and Apple, and give me all of your money and credit card information. I'll give you an iTunes certificate. Uh, and it doesn't actually work that way. Um, so that's what a certificate authority is. It's there to be that, that stopgap to say, hey, this person is actually who they say they are, um, and you can really, truly trust them. Um, it's essentially a notary for the web. So it is, it is double, triple, quadruple confirming that you're, you're good to go. Um, and so that brings us to what Let's Encrypt actually is. So Let's Encrypt is a free certificate, uh, free SSL certificate that uh, that you can use. That's um, fairly simple to set up. I mean, it, it does take ten or fifteen minutes, but it doesn't take you know 
it doesn't take an enormous amount of, of coding prowess. You don't have to be a developer. You, don't, you, you can actually do it quite simply. And if you do ever get stuck, the community for Let's Encrypt is pretty spectacular. Um, it's similar to WordPress, or you know, if you go to like Stack Exchange or GitHub and you just need help, people are more than willing to help you out. Um, and another thing is that because it's free, anyone can use it. Um, there isn't this like this monetary uh, gap to um, to say, hey, I I can't afford this SSL certificate because um, you know SSL certificates aren't terribly expensive, at least not like the the domain validation lower level certificates. Um, but forty dollars here in America is quite a different story if you're going to India or Singapore or something like that. Um, so the setup of an actual domain validation certificate. Um, this is what you'll do. It's just two commands. You're sudoing in, in your terminal. Um, and if, if you want, you will literally just follow this. Um, and so what happens is uh, Let's Encrypt will generate a pair of RSA private key, a, a private key and a public key. Um, and they'll contact the certificate authority with your public key. The certificate authority will say, all right, cool, I've got your public key, um, we can move forward. And the, the program, they'll ask your, the certificate authority to verify your domain. So that's what I was saying when I earlier, I like literally clicked a button and said, I want an SSL certificate. Well, once I said that, I had to verify that I actually owned my domain, right? I have to confirm that I am actually Nancy Thonke and I'm not, you know, Google or whatever. Um, and so once I confirm that I actually own my domain, um, the certificate authority will ask a few, uh, few questions to verify all of these things, or they'll ask you to perform a few tasks depending on who you're talking to. Um, and then you'll, you'll install the program, and then the certificate authority will say, all right, cool, you're good to go, we can move forward. Um, and then they'll, they'll create another pair of public key and private key, and uh, they'll generate a, a certificate signing request. So they'll generate it with the public key and then send it to the certificate authority. Um, and so it's, this is, these are all things that are happening kind of in the back end. You're literally just doing these two things, but you, you're also, you know, just, to, just so you know, there is a lot that goes into it. It is fairly simple on the front end now, but there are a lot of things and a lot of security protocols that are built into it to make sure everything's working properly. Um, and finally, once all of this is done and you've verified everything, then Let's Encrypt will install the certificate and you'll have the nice shiny green padlock on your site and it'll be glorious. Um, so, uh, how do you actually encrypt your site? Like, sure, you see these, these pseudo commands, you're like, damn, now I have to do a, a terminal command and that's not my cup of tea. Um, and you're probably not actually, like, you know, you may be on your own, your own hosting plan or your, your own server, but if you're not, if you're on a shared hosting plan, these are all hosts that, um, that provide SSL or that are cool with SSL certificates. Please do keep in mind some of them do require your own um, IP address. Like you, some of them don't necessarily say, yeah, shared hosting is cool. Some of them do require that um, you have your own individual IP address um, before they'll let you install an, IP, or install an SSL certificate. But all of these guys are out there. So you can go to the hall and say, hey, I have a site on you, your server, and I want this SSL certificate. Please help me. Um, and I will be posting these slides online, um, and I'll tweet them out so you guys can have the link. Um, but all of those are links to this, their respective SSL installation guides or whatever. Um, there'll be either blog posts or actual instructions step by step. Um, some of them, you know, require a bit more effort than others, but they do. these all do at least provide SSL certificates in some way or another. Um, you might use a VPS or you might you know, have other server setups. You, you might not be on shared hosting. If so, I would recommend checking out these articles. Uh, they provide really great introductions and breakdowns to SSL certificates and how to install them on more unique server setups. Um, I won't go into that right now though. Uh, and another option is WordPress.com. Um, if you are on WordPress.com and you aren't on your own self-hosted WordPress installation, then it's already there. Um, it's been there since March of this year, and uh, all, all custom domains and all WordPress.com domains have an SSL certificate, and they're all HTTPS secure. Um, and if you, have, if you want to learn more, you can click all of those links. Um, and so, uh, the final thing I wanted to go over, or a couple final things, are the common issues. So a really brief overview of what we just went through is that uh, at least Let's Encrypt um, is pretty easy to set up. 
uh, it's free to use, um, and it's good for single server setups, right? So it may not necessarily, but it may not necessarily work for um, for more um, custom setups. So if you have like a load balance setup, SSL or a Let's Encrypt certificate may not be the greatest idea for you. But there are lots of other uh, SSL certificate that you can purchase. You don't have to stick with Let's Encrypt. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that um, Let's Encrypt in particular does have, require renewal every 90 days. So um, generally other certificates last for 180 days or a full year. Um, as, uh, Let's Encrypt in particular does require 90 days. Um, so just keep that in mind whenever you're doing this. Uh, it, I actually just have like a Google um, Calendar reminder set up just to make sure that I, I definitely for sure renew my certificate because once it expires, you lose the protection. Um, and there's no like, there's not really like a buffer period that like slowly ekes away. It's just you're either protected or you're not. Um, and do keep in mind that lots of plugins, uh, especially security plugins, may um, require custom like a custom setting change of some kind when you um, when you install an SSL certificate. So for Jetpack, for example, or really a lot of uh, plugins, um, be sure that you change your settings. So once you go into dashboard settings general, make sure that you change your URL because your, your URL is no longer HTTP, ooh, shiny website.com, it's HTTPS. So be sure that you do that. Otherwise, you'll have lots of 404 errors and lots of other errors that you just, you won't really appreciate. Um, and finally, uh, a lot of people are interested in SSL certificates because Google recently said, or semi-recently said, that they were going to change their search ranking algorithm because, well, I, they are going to say that, that, um, that secure websites are going to be worth more or they're going to be ranked higher. Um, and that's, I mean, that's a very valid concern to have. Like, obviously, you want to be higher up on Google search results when somebody's looking for a mechanic or a web developer or whatever. Um, but it's not just, I mean, if Google search rankings are the only thing motivating you, I mean, I, under, I understand the monetary value of that. But at the same time, you do also, I mean, you, you should be careful at least or care about the people that are visiting your site. Um, you should be caring about your audience, your viewers, and providing that like very simple um, layer of security for them. Because it's not just that you know you want your own site to be secure, you want your own personal information to be secure. Because obviously, I don't want my credit card information to be you know wandering around the web. Um, but you also owe it to other people that don't necessarily you know if you go to a website and you're giving your credit card information, you do expect that your credit card information is going to be kept secure. So in that same way, like provide that same level of security to people that are visiting your sites. And I wanted to go through some um, FAQs that disappeared. That's cool. Um, OK, all right, sure. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so I, some FAQs, uh, I just wanted to go over really quickly. Please feel free to ask any questions um, once we get to the official question time but um, some quick ones so I set it all up does that mean that it won't that I won't be hacked no like never ever please don't ever think that that's the only thing that will protect your site and you're good to go um, please make sure that you're following best practices especially for your passwords and things like that but just security best practices in general two-factor authentication things like this please 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 keep that in mind um, and then will it make your site slower no I mean, not necessarily. If you if you set up an SSL certificate and suddenly your site goes from, you know, all the website tests or speed tests are saying, yeah, your site's great, 90%, it's fantastic, you're all green, and then suddenly it's like, oh yes, you're faster than 11% of sites worldwide. Um, there's other things going on. If the SSL certificate um, installing it made your site do that. It's possible that the SSL certificate had something to do with it, but most likely it's not. It's something else is going on. I would highly recommend if you're on a shared hosting platform, get in touch with your host. That something else is going on with the server setup. Um, if you have a webmaster, get in touch with them. You know, whatever you need to do. But more likely than not, it's not your SSL certificate that is that is making it, you know, be so slow. Um, and finally, uh, what's the difference between uh, Let's Encrypt and paid SSL certificates? So I've talked about Let's Encrypt a lot, but there are lots of SSL certificate options. It's not like you can you just have to use Let's Encrypt because that's the coolest thing. It is quite nice, but there are lots of paid um, SSL certificates that you can get. But technically, they are not actually different. So 
the setup, the, the actual code setup of what an SSL certificate is and how it's created is the same whether it's free or you're paying $500 a month. Um, the difference is, is that those other uh, certificates that are more expensive, um, you'd be using them on more highly traffic sites or if you're dealing with lots of money, right? Then you, it, then it provides things like insurance. Per, like if your site is hacked, then you have insurance going into it. Or you can say, hey, I, I swear I wasn't trying to steal all of my, my user's credit card information. I just got hacked, right? So it's not, you, you're provided other types of information or other types of protection where that Let's Encrypt doesn't provide because it's a free SSL certificate. It's meant for the everyday user, the one that says I'm just a blog, right? Um, so finally, uh, some common misconceptions. So um, authentication. Um, there's, okay, so there's a guy named Tony Perez. He's pretty awesome. He's a really nice guy. He runs security and um, he has this really great article. I've linked it in the bottom corner. Um, but I'm going to go over it very quickly that he talks about basically misconceptions that people have about SSL certificates and what it provides. Um, in terms of authentication, just because you see a little green padlock that says that it's bankofamerica.com, right? Um, doesn't necessarily mean that's still bankofamerica.com. Not that it, 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 you'll look at like things like um, the, the URL. It doesn't say bankofamerica.com, it says bankofaamerica.com, right? It's little things that people can change in the domain and they can still set up an SSL certificate. No one, no one is stopped or blocked from setting up an SSL certificate and they can pretend. So like things like phishing attacks can still happen. Right? Just because you see that green padlock doesn't necessarily, like, please be aware, like, like I keep harping on, SSL certificates aren't the only, like they, they don't protect you 100% always and you know, forever. Um, also things like integrity. Um, make sure that, like, sure, uh, an SSL certificate does protect man in the middle attacks technically, but please, again, be aware like, of what you're doing. Don't just trust, like, random stores online that, you know, they may say they have a, an SSL certificate and everything's fine and dandy, but, you know, just be aware of what you're doing is essentially what I will keep saying. Um, and finally, encryption. Um, this is like the key point of all of this. If you, if you take nothing away for, else from this talk, please take this. This only encrypts information when it's in transit, period. That is it. Once it gets to wherever you're sending it to, they then decide how to handle that information and how to store it. So you hear of all of these, all of these stores that are getting hacked and so these, all, they lost thousands of customers' credit card data. It's not because they didn't have SSL certificates. They definitely had very robust SSL certificates and great security protocols and everything. But once they got the information, it was then decrypted because you have to decrypt it to read it. And then it was stored in that decrypted manner. So now suddenly, well, all of this information, if anyone hacks your database, they have all access to all of your unencrypted information. So that's like the biggest thing to keep in mind. SSL certificates are great for information in transit. Once it's no longer in transit, all bets are off and that, de that then depends on other security protocols that you should hopefully have in place. Um, and so yeah, phishing, I went over a bit already, um, and nation state attacks. So basically, um, when you're, you should assume that your all of your information and all of your your communication online is going to be tracked. That's kind of a, 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 an unfortunate or fortunate, depending on the way you're looking at it. Truth of today, um, the NSA, for example, tracks all communication. That's not really like whether you believe in it or agree with it or not. It's it's a it's a truth of today. So be careful of what you're doing. Like if you if you are communicating in any way, then your communications are going to be tracked. Whether they're actively like monitored, that's a whole different story. But they will they will most likely be gathered and stored in some place in a server somewhere. So finally, oh I'm sorry. Ah, I allegedly know how to use this thing. Um, nope, I don't. I, no, not at all. I definitely don't know how to use this thing. I'm so sorry. Finally, in conclusion though, what I'm trying to say and trying to get to, uh, eventually, I give up. Um, eventually, I will get to this. What I'm trying to say is that SSL certificates are great. They are great for, um, for uh, getting, getting secure, it, providing the security to your users or providing the security to yourself. But that isn't the only thing that you need to do. And that's not the only, like, 
there's so many other things that you need to be doing. And that's just, I mean, SSL certificates are great. I'm a huge proponent of them, obviously, because I'm talking up here and scared slightly out of my mind of messing up. Um, and But I'm still talking about it up here uh, to all of you, because I don't want you to be scared about setting up an SSL certificate. It's, it seems kind of complicated, but it's not, I swear. And hey, ha, perfect timing. I meant to do that. <laughs> So uh, finally, I just wanted to leave you guys with this. Uh, Let's Encrypt is, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a huge movement. And it's a community, and it's all these things. Um, they, if you want to learn more about Let's Encrypt specifically, like their code, their setup, how they're doing all of these things, they have a GitHub. Um, GitHub page. They have all the all the code up there. Um, Let's Encrypt has a website. They have a forum. They have like really like I keep saying they have a really good community of people that are interested in helping you get set up and helping you figure out what's going on or even just learning more about what the heck is going on. Um, and they are actually still crowdfunding. They have almost they have raised very little money. But if you do actually get something out of Let's Encrypt, I I mean, there's crowdfunding. I. Check it out if you want to. Um, and finally, the sources. Uh, I used a lot of, there's some really fantastic people online that talk about this, and they're far more brilliant than I could ever hope to be. Um, and I used a lot of the information that they talk about. Um, so if you want to learn more, and you want to you know, learn more than 40 minutes can tell you, um, check out these articles. There, there is some code involved. It might feel a little over your head in some cases, but I promise it's not that complicated. Um, so yeah, if anyone has any questions, I see someone. Oh no, that's Spencer. Okay, cool. Hi, Spencer. I'm a someone. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nancy. Uh, five minutes. That's a quick question. Nancy, thanks for your very timely talk. Yeah. And I have a feeling that 2017 would be the year of SSL. At least the rest of the world will find out. Um, just a quick question. How difficult or easy is it if you have a host and you're, you have a plan and you, you have an SSL set up and you want to change hosts? What's involved in that situation? So there's a lot, a lot. Yeah, of course. Um, thanks for asking. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that you can change your host. Um, there are a lot of different um, backup solutions that you can have that you can, um, for example, okay, I work for Automatic, so I, I support Vault Press, for example. And so we help people change hosts all the time. And we have an entire setup. And there's lots of different um, backup solutions that you can do to, to change hosts. And a lot of hosts, like especially your new host, will be quite happy to help you uh, move to them because, well, you're going to be paying them a lot of money um, but there, there's a lot there can be complications and it sort of depends on the host that you're using as well as the host you're moving to I can't provide like a super in-depth uh, response to that unfortunately but if you do run into problems feel free to come and ask me if like if you have a, a custom setup or anything hi Nancy hi. I'm enjoying your talk um, our domain is the University of Georgia but we host on a a different provider. Mm -hmm. So do I need a certificate for the University of Georgia and then by the provider? And so also if we are hosting our media on another th server so everything's faster, do you need three certificates? Um, so is your, is your main domain University of Georgia? Uh-huh. Okay, so you would need it definitely for the, for University of Georgia. As for the other media, I'm not actually sure. I wish I knew the answer to that. Okay, because um, sometimes they share unsecured photos or something, and some right. of the plugins are now saying that's not not good security. It's it's definitely far better to have all of it secure. Period. Okay. Um, if you have to choose one over the other, I mean, I would definitely choose the the main domain. But I. Okay, that's actually not fair. I would highly recommend just securing all of it because okay. it's just there's there's so many other ways that there can be cracks in in your security that an SSL certificate is kind of the easiest, simplest level to okay. to get past. All right, thank you. Yeah. Hi, um, my question is just so my site that one of the sites that I work on it uses um, like WooCommerce and then we're using PayPal to set up the payment options. Is mm -hmm. there still benefits to using the SSL certificate if you're using a third party um, thing um, like that? So when I first started, I, I used to freelance develop before before becoming a happiness engineer. And I used to just say, hey, my site is just, I mean, I'm not, I'm personally not taking any payment information. So I use Stripe, for example. Um, and so I didn't have an SSL certificate. And 
it was fine for then, but I don't necessarily recommend it anymore. For money purposes, yeah, if you're using PayPal, I mean, you're quite secure, because uh, PayPal is, I mean, one of the, the best security money things out there. Um, but if you want to have a secure website just in general, um, it goes back to the whole everyone can have an SSL certificate argument. So I'm going to say that you, you should have an SSL certificate for your site, period. Um, as far as the, the payment options, if you're using PayPal or Stripe or anything like that, the payment itself is already secure. Um, and it's great that you're doing that and actually not you know taking in the money on your own, especially as a smaller, if, if you are a smaller business, I, I mean, I'm talking about in general. If you're a smaller business, it's I mean, it, it is a risk that you don't necessarily want to take um, because then you are uh, responsible for all of that information that you're, you're, you're getting. So hopefully Thanks. that helps. Yeah, of course. Hi, Nancy. Um, is there a difference between uh, paying for s difference in security on when I pay for something over a, a public Wi-Fi network over a private Wi-Fi network if I'm using SSL? Are they, they both the same level of security? Like if I wanted to make a payment on, like, say, Amazon at a Starbucks, uh, as opposed to making a payment to, uh, to Amazon in my own home, uh, would that would there be a difference in security? There's okay. So the great thank you. That's an awesome question, and I should have covered it. Um, the the great thing about SSL certificates is that it does encrypt your information. So it's literally. I saw this. I heard of this example when I was when I was doing some research, and it said it's literally like talking crap about your worst enemy. You're like most evil foe of foes in a conference, coming to a conference, having everyone come and talking about basically coming up with an encryption setup for talking about this really terrible person that you despise above all else, um, and then talking about them for the entire conference and having that person sit like right there. Sorry, I don't mean that you are. <laughs> um, um, having them sit like right in the front row and have them not know at all what you're what you're talking about, right? So in that sense, yeah, your your information is technically secure. I don't necessarily recommend doing it on a public network, despite that, because I mean you're still on a public network. Mm -hmm. So for example, right now, if I wanted to, if anyone is on their um, logging, they're on this conference Wi-Fi and they've logged into their site and they don't have HTTPS, in theory, I could have all of your passwords. Like right now, period. Um, if I wasn't giving this talk, I actually kind of wanted to try that. <laughs> but, um, but not, sorry, I don't mean that in any sort of nefarious way at all. I, but just saying that like, when you're on a public network, you are on a public network. Um, if you but they can't read your information on the public network, right? Because no, but but they can still like sniff all of the data. They can still like do like once they. It is secure because you have an SSL certificate. But in terms of best practices for security for yourself, like I personally never log into my bank account on a public network. Period. Mm -hmm. If I need to, I I tether to my phone. Um, or I use a v, like a virtual private network, right? Okay. Like I use a VPN or I, I tether to my phone, but I'm also a lot more, um, well, anal about my security. Uh, and so I, I personally wouldn't recommend it, but I do understand that like, if you do, you're not in any sort of huge risk. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Uh, and one more question. Yeah. Uh, paid uh, certificate authorities versus less encrypt. I was told, I think you said it earlier, there's no technical differences in that, right? In terms yeah. of how safe they are. Mm -hmm. It's just the only difference is the insurance offered. Well, so, I mean, if you if you look at like, paid uh, SSL certificates, they're probably going to install them for you. They're probably going to upkeep mm -hmm. them for you mm -hmm. because you're paying the money. Mm -hmm. I would hope so if you're paying the money. Yeah. Um, so there's all of those sorts of benefits. There's also, like I mentioned on the slide, like PR benefits. If you are, if you do, you know, somehow run into some sort of trouble, then you have PR benefits of saying, yeah, you have a paid, really secure, awesome, um, SSL certificate, or you can say to your insurance provider that, hey, I did everything and more, and nothing is wrong, and you have the, the um, peace of mind, I guess, of saying that, like, well, they're handling it, so if something messed up, well, they messed it up, not me. So there is that benefit, but technically, it's still an SSL certificate, whether it's $3 or $500. Okay, so it doesn't make, let, there's, Let's encrypt certificates are no worse than, say, like a rapid SSL certificate. No, not at all. Okay. Mm. Thanks. Yeah. 
Thank you, uh, Nancy. That's all the time we have uh, for this presentation. Cool. Um, but I'm sure Nancy will make herself available for questions either now or it sounds yeah. like at the Jetpack booth for the rest of the day. Yeah, I'll be here if anyone has any questions. I'm also on Twitter at Nancy Thanke if you want to just like talk to me. Or you can send me a message on my site or whatever. I'm, I'm open. Thank you.